Hi, what's up? My name's Samuel Leeds, and in this video, I wanted to explain how you can invest in UK property investment. So, firstly, before I tell you how and what steps you should take, I'm just going to explain why I personally love buying your property investment in the UK, and that is because if I invest my money in anything else, I can invest it in the bank. If you put money in the bank, the money shrinks over time because as cost of living goes up, the money stays the same, the money becomes worth less over time. I can invest it in business, and that's great, and that could be really successful, but of course there's always a risk because the business could go bust, the st I've got staff, there's, there's a much higher risk. I could put the money in stocks and shares, and again, same sort of problem. It could disappear overnight. I could put the money in gold and someone could steal the gold, whereas if I put it in property, the property is attached onto the land, it's attached onto the ground, and it's gonna go up over time in value because history repeats itself. I'm going to get paid in capital appreciation as the property appreciates in value and I'm going to have a tenant in there looking after it paying me money as well so I'm going to get paid twice. So that's why I really want to invest in property but the, the question is how? Well there's different ways to invest in property. By the way if you're enjoying this video don't forget to smash that like and hit the subscribe button right now. There's two different ways basic ways. Number one is I can buy and sell. That's how most people think about property investment. They think I'll buy a house, I'll do it up and then I'll sell it. That's a fantastic method. However, I prefer to buy and hold and the reason I prefer to buy and hold is because if you buy and sell, effectively you're still trading your time for money because you're gonna have to buy it, you're gonna have to oversee it, you're gonna have to make sure that you can add value, then you're gonna sell it and then you're gonna get paid a, a chunk of money. So you've got that money in exchange for your time, so you're tr exchanging your time for money, which is fine, but I think that the first thing, before you start doing that, you wanna become financially free, so you wanna be in a position whereby your passive income covers your lifestyle so that you don't have to work and you're financially free and to do that you're going to need your rental income to cover your living expenses yourself so your properties have enabled you to go full-time in property and and, li and work because you want to not because you have to so my properties most of them I never ever 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 plan on selling them my plan is to hold on to them until the day I die and I will just benefit from the rents if they go up in value rather than selling them I, I'd rather refinance them and get a new mortgage and then buy more properties and then make more rents. So I'm going to be talking more about that strategy which is buying and holding which we call buy to let. So if you're wanting to get into the buy to let market you are going to typically conventionally you're going to need some money behind you. Now I do teach in some of my other videos how you can buy property with no money so you can find those on this channel. So typically when you're doing buy to let you're going to put in 25% of the purchase price. So I'm going to use my calculator here to make sure that uh, these numbers are correct. So let's say you're buying a house for £100,000. You're going to put in 25%, which means you're going to have to put in £25,000 to a buy to let property, which is a £100,000 house. Now, if you put £25,000 in, that means your mortgage is going to be 75%, which is £75,000. Now, interest payments are typically around about, for buy-to-let mortgages, about 3%. So you're going to be paying your interest payments of 3%, which is £2,250. Divide that by 12, your monthly mortgage interest payments are going to be 187. So when you're looking at a buy-to-let property, what you need to be looking at is, will your rent cover this 187 and more because you're of course you're going to have some costs management costs maybe some maintenance as, 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 as the property goes on you might have to change the carpets every couple of years maybe so you're gonna to have to make sure that your rent is a lot more than 187 to be making a profit now the real trick is to buy low rent high so that you can then get a good return. Now, how do you even start? What's the very first thing that you should do right now if you're interested in investing in property? Well, what I would say is, get yourself open a computer, go to Zoopla, Rightmove. Rightmove is the best because there's so many hundreds of thousands of properties on Rightmove. Go to Rightmove, look at the properties available, try and find some properties that, and again, most people say, I want to buy properties that are nice. I want to buy properties that I'd live in myself. No, this is a business. You want to buy properties that are going to give you a good return on investment, that you're going to be able to buy low and rent out high. Now, people say, oh, buy low, rent high. That sounds like you're just a greedy, horrible landlord. No. You'll rent it out high because the property will demand a high rent because you're giving value. 
And you'll buy it low because you'll be buying it in an area whereby right now houses you can buy them reasonably low. So this isn't a case of trying to squeeze as much out of the tenant as possible. You're gonna have to look after the tenant. Let me tell you this, property investing is a business. Your house is your product, you want a good product. Your tenant is your customer. This is a business about supply and demand. So you're gonna try and find the correct kind of house that's gonna give you a very good return on investment. What I would suggest, go on right move, find some houses that you think could give you a good return on investment, ring up the agent and ask to go and look around the house. The best way to learn this is to actually just go out and look around the house. If you wanna learn all about watches, you know, understand about watches, you're probably best to just go to a shopping mall and look at watches and try them on and get an understanding. If you wanna learn about sports cars, go and do some test drives, learn about cars, go and see some cars. If you wanna learn about property, what I would say is just go and view some houses. Don't feel like, oh, but I'm not quite ready to buy you. No, 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 just go and view some houses. Go and speak to the estate agents, tell them what you want. Say, look, I'm thinking of, I'm interested in investing in property. Can you give, can you give me some good investment properties? You'll learn so much off them. When they show you around, make sure that you're looking at properties, not with your feelings, but with your formulas. I've done a video which is how to work out the return on investment. I checked that out just above. You know, look at properties that are gonna give you the best return on investment. Now, what are the risks to buying property? What are the things you need to be careful of? I think the risks are one, buying a bad house. <laughs> buying a house that needs too much work that you're unaware of. This can often happen by, um, by if you buy from an auction or if you buy really hastily based on feelings. So again, when you buy a house, always get a survey. I recommend getting an independent builder survey to look at it with a fine tooth comb to check any problems and then quote how much it's gonna cost to fix those. Next, not just a bad house, but also uh, you've paid the wrong price for the house. So again, always make sure that if, if you're getting a mortgage on it, it's not too bad because the lender will not lend to you on the property unless it is worth the amount you're paying for it. If you're paying over the odds, it will get downvalued. Make sure you don't pay over the odds for the house. Someone once said, if you're not embarrassed about the offer that you've put forward, then the offer is too high. So always go in a little bit lower. The worst that can happen is they can say no and then you can creep up a little bit. Once you've bought the house, what are the risks then? Bad tenants, no tenants. I always say everything will rent out at the right price, you just need to know what the right price is. So make sure you do your due diligence, you get trained, you speak to the estate agents, you speak to the local letting agents, and you know how much that house will rent out for, who the types of tenants will be. And next, make sure that you've got a good property management company that are gonna do references, they're gonna do all the credit checks, they're gonna make sure they're putting the right tenants in to your property. So if you've got the right power team, have the right surveys, the right property managers, you do your right due diligence, property investing, I think, is one of the most lucrative ways to make money, and I also think it's the best place to invest your money. If you look at the rich list, nearly all of the people on the rich list either have made their money through property or they have made their money through business or whatever, and now now they are also investing in property, but property is always the theme. So I love property through and through. I think the UK is one of the best places to invest in property, despite some of the uncertainty that's going on right now. When people are a little bit uncertain, that's when you need to be super greedy and get in there, as Warren Buffett would say. So I hope that video has kind of given you some ideas and been helpful. I'd love to know your thoughts, so please do comment below. And do not forget to subscribe, stay tuned, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you so much for watching this video. It's mentoring on a Monday every single week at 7 p.m. on a Monday between 8 p.m. I'm gonna be live answering all your comments and questions. Don't forget to subscribe right over here so you'll never miss one of these videos. I'll see you next week at 7 p.m. Also, if you haven't got a copy of my book, you need this in your life. You can get it from Amazon for £10.99 or a gift from me absolutely free down below in the description link. I'll see you next week, Monday at 7 p.m.